So all these things are natural fitrah that a person also, and I have to say this and I hope that I don't offend anybody, but also, um, you know, your, your, um, you know, the bodily, the, the weight, for example, weight in Islam, which is, I'm talking about weight, when people are overweight, when, because they eat a lot. Because Islam, it tells us that when you eat, to be a healthy Muslim, to have self-esteem, and so that you don't fall into obesity and feel bad about yourself and so on and so forth, he said, monitor your food. And monitor your physical uh, movements so that you can always you know, stay a little bit lightweighted. So he said, for example, fill your stomach only a third for water, a third for air and a third for um, food. He said, only fill your stomach enough with what you need. Don't go overboard. Don't be like the kuffar where they love food. They eat it for pleasure and for, you know, where a Muslim eats it because of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't take food as something where you know you eat it and you stuff yourself up and so on and so forth so a Muslim has to monitor these things, very true and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is the fitra which he created us on fitrata allahi allati fatara nasa alayha la tabdeela li khalqillah this is the fitra which Allah has created people to be like the natural attractiveness that Allah wants the people to have there is no changing to Allah's creation however the woman should not show her attractiveness and her beauty outside of the house to other men to look at Many people associate, you know, the hijab with bombs. And so when they look at a hijab woman, they say, God, she's scary, she's ugly. Don't let them, you know, make you feel that way. They don't, they don't know anything. They know nothing. Your beauty is your hijab and is jealous because you can't, they, want, they can't see your beauty, no matter what they say. You know, just a little joke. When I was about 13 or 14... You know, you just reach puberty and you're becoming a teenager. There's a scar here on my eyebrow, if you can see it. I don't know if you can. Which I've always had since I was in grade 3. And everybody over there in Lebanon again, they used to say to me, you know, Oh, Bilal, you would have been so handsome if only wasn't that scar right there. Oh, God. Your brother, you know, Bimfa Absara, they used to say. He'll really get sold on the market. Lots of women would want him. But yeah, Bilal, it's the eyebrow that ruins you. They used to say that to me for crying out. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> I sat with my dad in the car, I remember one day, and said, Baba, I'm really concerned about you know, this scar that I have here. He said, what's wrong, Dad? I said, I think that no girl will like me. He laughed and looked at me, he goes, Abtunfa, ya Baba, abtunfa. Which means, don't worry, you'll get sold in the market. There's somewhere out there who'll take you. <laughs> Believe it or not, now, this eyebrow thing is a fashion in the world. It, People are actually deliberately getting the, the shavers and, and making it. I've been at school, they say, Sir, do you shave your eyebrow? I said, for crying out loud. I'm the original, I said. <laughs> before I married my wife, before, she wasn't really taught about Islam that much. Her family didn't, wasn't a good Islamic upbringing, but now, alhamdulillah, they're okay. She said to me that she, every time she saw a man with a beard or these religious men, she used to hate him. That she, they looked ugly to her because all these stories she used to hear. But then, after knowing Islam, I was her first candidate. Meaning I, she wanted to marry me, even though I had a beard. <laughs> Believe it or not, just to give you an example of myself, Annie, when I came to ask for my wife's hand in marriage, her sisters you know, came out to the window, looked through the window, see me for the first time. You know what I found out later on? They go to her, well, he's tall. <laughs> I go, come on, is that all they found? Yeah, he's... So don't worry sisters, you know, I copped it too. Once I was giving this talk at these people's house, right? And everybody was so emotional about it and so on and so forth. As I was leaving, I saw this five-year-old boy and I said, Assalamu alaikum Habibi, how are you? He looks at me and goes, you've got a big nose. As they say in Lebanese, I, came, I was so, so um, embarrassed, but I go, yes, yes, son, I do have a big nose and that's good. I didn't care. Don't care about these things, inshallah. You can never please the people. There was a father and a son and a donkey. One day they passed by and the father was riding on the donkey. They passed by the first tribe and they said, look at this man, how oppressive he is to his son. Makes him walk while he rides on the donkey. So the next tribe, he put his son on there. They said, look how disrespectful the son is to his dad. Makes his, makes his dad walk while he sits on the donkey. They passed the third tribe, and this time they both got off the donkey. They go, look how stupid they are, they've got a donkey and they don't even ride on him. <laughs> they passed the fourth tribe. They both sat on the donkey. They go, how oppressive they are to animals and cruel they are. They, 
They passed the fifth uh, tribe and guess what they did? They carried the donkey on top of their backs. <laughs> and they said, God, these guys. How stupid and silly they are. They can never oppress people. Brothers and sisters, what is there, what is there, why do the Western non-Muslims watch out for their beauty so much? I want to show you the comparison between you and them. Why you shouldn't worry about that. Let me explain to you. When you don't believe in a hereafter, you don't believe in a God, you don't believe that there is a, here, that there is a paradise waiting for you, you don't believe they've been created for a purpose, what are you going to naturally want? You're going to naturally think that this is the only chance you have to live the best and take the most out of life that you can, right? That's what you're going to think. There's no hereafter, there's nothing, so I guess I better take the best out of it. So now they follow their desires to everything that they can do. And this is where the, uh, they got the, the famous Nike phrase, just do it. Meaning, just follow your desires, or the phrase, live life to the fullest. Do what makes you happy. Yes, if it means intoxicating yourself, do it if it makes you feel happy. If it, getting high and ruining your mind, do it. Overeating and pleasuring yourself with food, even if you become a beast, do it if it makes you happy. Cutting yourself up under surgery to change your features and body, do it. Walking naked, do it. Being homosexual, do it. Acting like an animal, just do it. Makes you happy, do it, man. It's only one life, so make the most of it. This is what they believe in. Like, this is their issue. What's your issue? You believe in the hereafter, you know they've been created for a test, no matter what you have, alhamdulillah, you strive because you want to please Allah, this image and this body is going to go away, you have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rely on Him because the hereafter is going to be eternal for you. What are you worried about? This is not the only life that you have, this is not the only chance that you have. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهُمْ يَأْلَمُونَ كَمَا تَأْلَمُونَ وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ They feel the same pain that you feel, but you hope for something they cannot hope for. So don't worry, don't compare yourself to them. Alhamdulillah, you are more honorable. Allah has made you more honorable than that. Let's look at the celebrities. Let's just have one look at them and see if we can call them happy or not. How many of their marriages have lasted more than average of six months? I don't think many of them. How many have done cosmetic surgery on their faces and bodies because they weren't happy and are still not satisfied? How many have done the impossible to themselves yet still get intoxicated and high on drugs because they are still unhappy? Many of them. How many of them get to even die a normal death, mostly on drug addiction, suicide or AIDS? How many of them even have normal human faces to look at after cos cosmetic surgery? They don't have a normal face anymore. Let's see. Pamela Anderson. You should see her without makeup, sisters. And I think that you'll appreciate the next drunk that comes past. Donatella Versace, she's a world um, leader, a designer. After surgery, she stuffed up her nose that looks now is the size of Ayers Rock and lips swollen like a baboon's backside. Really, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I know you think that I'm being harsh here and talking about them. Guys, she changed what Allah gave her of beauty. She thought that human beings can make her more beautiful. If only she resorted to her own beauty, she would have been more beautiful than this. Michelle Pfeiffer, whose top lip they say, now looks like a caterpillar after surgery. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Let's just not go there. <laughs> Prince. Michael Jackson. Who looked better before his face fell off, but... Um, they say that he became a Muslim, Allahu Akbar. But still, nevertheless, don't change what Allah has given you, my brothers and sisters. Take one look at a celebrity without makeup. My God, you will thank Allah a thousand times for what Allah has given you. A few celebrities are a good example, I have to say, like Whoopi Goldberg. You know, people, a lot of people think she's not attractive, but she's managed to find a happy life, really, because of looking at her unique beauty. I can say probably sometimes you can learn from Kuffar something.